Million Dollar Sellers. It's cracking, y'all. Good morning in Las Vegas, Nevada. We got anybody from Las Vegas here? Anybody? Hey! How far did y'all travel? 30 minutes? Okay. Welcome. That's a journey. Appreciate you being here. Um, do me a favor. Stand up again. All day. Norm Lanier, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Norm Lanier. That guy's a legend. Legend. If you know Norm. Put your hands on your hips for me. Give me a little chicken wing. Yep. Come on. Let's see it. A lady in the pink coat. Get them hands on those hips. Yep. Yeah, like this. Yeah, chicken wing. Now just rub elbows with the person next to you. All right, go ahead. Sit down. Um, listen, the best thing that you will get out of this event is a relationship with another person. Um, hey, there's going to be good content. I have some stuff that I think is going to be useful for your business. I think that like when I trace back my entrepreneurial journey, I can trace back every major leap to a relationship I made at a live event. So I think that's the best thing you'll get. By the way, for the rest of the event, no touching. You had one license. I gave you a license. Okay. You could rub elbows. And now you stay within your own personal space bubble. I don't want to get in trouble. Um, hey, I'm really thankful that you're here. I know that it takes a lot to, um, you know, leave your family and your daily life and come out to an event. And um, I appreciate you showing up. I started in e-commerce in 2005. And uh, I don't have a laser pointer, but you see that curl? That was on purpose. Yeah, I did that. I thought that was cool. Turns out it wasn't. Um, and uh, I sold, I was America's number one retailer of mullet wigs, Elvis wigs, Afro wigs, clown wigs, finger wave fluffs, 1920 French king wigs, whatever. I had it. And I uh, started the business looking like this. I ended it kind of looking like that. I sold that business in 2012 for about a quarter million bucks. Um, and I was also Shopify's first ever professor at their e-commerce university in 2013. I'm still teaching for them today. I manage, I'm no longer the CEO of any of my companies as of January 1st, but I have a team of 180 people across five brands. Last year, if you exclude the brand that we just bought, that's about a $100 million a year brand. Um, my brands that I started and built did about 70 million in revenue last year. And I'm not telling you this to like brag. I'm telling you this because look at me. If I can do this, you can do this. Like, I am no smarter than anyone in this room. I've just been doing it a while. And in this industry, damn, what's cracking out here? You got that crouch. That was, yo, that right there was, that was effort. There it is. Hey, that man was crouching. He didn't want to get in your way. That's how much he cares. I don't know who he is to this group, but he's important and he cares. So give it up for that dude right there. That dude just risked an LCL ligament to not get in your way. This table right here. If he had gone down, I'm blaming you. So um, this is my main brand, Boom. We've done almost, we're at 190 million in sales on this brand since 2015. Um, we're almost at 200 million. And then I bought this company in 2021. It does about 30 million a year. Uh, and I own a couple other companies in the sort of information publishing software space that I started, Smart Marketers of Blog, Zipify a Software. I took on a partner. I sold to a private equity company. I sold one of my brands for a little bit over 50 million, and we got paid. And check this out. Watch this. You guys ready for this? Everybody look at the screen. Bam. Uh, and we'll talk about money, and we'll talk about the difference between cash flow businesses and then um, asset liquidation, which is really where you really make money. And I bought this company uh, with my private equity partners, which we're really big on Amazon. Um, I bought this about a year ago. Um, I also built some outdoor showers recently. Anybody got an outdoor shower? Yay, all right. Tell me about it, dude. What's your name? Ken. Ken, the outdoor shower guy. What, what's, the stu what's the scoop? Just on the side of your house? Made of stone. All right, you just want to one-up me? I see how it is, bro. <laughs> Damn. Talk about, yeah, mine's made of stone, man. All right, whatever. Um, so we're going to get into it. Listen, you don't know what the year is going to throw at you. you. You really don't. You don't know what life is going to put in front of you. I personally have had some pretty traumatic life events in the last five years. In 2018, my business partner, who was the face of the business, all the emails came from her, um, all the videos came from her. Like She was the, in, the core face of this business, and she was also kind of like a second mom to me. She suddenly passed away like really quickly. 
which was a problem um, just in general and also for the business. And then in 2022, I spent about 95% of my hours in a neonatal intensive care unit, um, which if you have not been in an ICU, and then in a baby ICU, it's, very, it's a very psychically intense environment with my daughter, um, who a miracle, as a miracle, was able to come home. She passed away about nine months ago today, actually. Um, she's got it right here. Don't worry, it's, her life was not a tragedy. Um, it was actually a pretty amazing love story. I'm not telling you this to feel bad for me about my daughter. What I'm telling you is, listen, you can't control what's coming your way. You cannot. That we know. But what you can control is how you show up every day. The attitude, enthusiasm, presence, deliberacy, intention that you bring to your world is your choice. And it will dictate how things go for you. And uh, let's talk about it from a business standpoint. I thought I recognized that dude. I was about to call you out. But your name isn't Devin, is it? No. no. Kyle. Hey, Devin, Kyle. You know. no. Kyle, where are you from, man? Hey, all right. Cool, man. Yeah, that's close to me. Um, give it up for Kyle, who is not Devin. <laughs> Do we have any Devins in here? Not a single Devin in the room. We got to get our act together, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in my, in my team, I got a Bevan, a Kevin, and a Devin. And I'm looking to hire an Evan if there's any Evans in here. I would prefer to have a Bev, And then I would make them a team. It would be Bevan, Devin, Kevin, and Evan. And they would have to work on projects together. Um, so the economy's in trouble, you guys. We got scared money, inflation, rising costs, longer lead times, lower margins. We got decreased social performance. We got the reduction of digital effectiveness. Shit is fucked up. Pardon my language. Are there any children in the room? If so, don't do as I say. Do as I do. I don't know. I don't know how that saying goes. But in any case, my apologies. Listen, it's tough right now. It is the toughest it has ever been. It's also the easiest it's ever been. We'll get there in a second. But, um, and the fuel cost increase, don't underestimate this one. This is a serious reason why a lot of your shipping is more expensive. So what are we going to do about it? That is the question. How are we going to navigate these intense times? And I've got some um, big picture reminders for you on what it takes to scale a brand. Hey, what up? Damn, you guys got mad photographers in the back. Hey. Um, feel free to take pictures of me. I know the guy said don't take pictures. Don't take pictures of anybody other than me. Feel free to take pictures of me. Post them on social media. Tag me. I like that. I'm on the social medias. I'm on Instagram. What's going on, man? You look skeptical. You feel like I haven't gotten to the content yet? I'm getting there, bro. <laughs> My man is out here looking at me like, okay, man, where is it at? I'm, I've been sitting here for 15 minutes. I do like your hat, though. Um, it's a beautiful color. Some big picture reminders, okay? In business, now Amazon's a little different, but my goal for you guys is to have Amazon be 50% of your business. Look, Amazon is 54%, I think, at this moment of, of e-commerce retail in America. 54 cents of every, oh damn, 54 cents of every dollar is spent on Amazon. So I want your business to be 54% Amazon. My business is right now, my biggest business is about 50% Amazon. The rest of my businesses are probably like 35% Amazon. So what I'm going to talk to you specifically is off Amazon. We could talk Amazon. I got a lot of Amazon experience. I built the first ever Amazon one-time use coupon code generating app for WordPress back in 2011, back when you could still give away coupons. Norm Lanier, I think, was a customer. Give it up for Norm Lanier. Not just because he gave me some money, but because he's the man. So um, it, it, I just took a random $170 million in sales from my site. You can see... 89 million of it was first-time customers, 81 million of it repeat customers. Without those repeat customers, I am out of business. I have no business without that. You must go all in on product expansion. These are some big picture reminders. We're going to get into some specifics after it. Basically, people only come to me for this product. This is the only product they come to me for, but look at all the other products I have. I have them because once I've sold someone one thing, I can upsell them and cross-sell them other stuff through the things I'm about to show you how to do. And on Amazon, product uh, development is the lifeblood of that business model because how many... I've been, an, I've been an Amazon business owner since 2010, and I've had several winning products go away for one reason or another, which happens. 
you need base hits, you need a bunch of products. So you must go all in on uh, product expansion and product development. Email and SMS are still where 45% of your e-commerce revenue is going to come from if you're selling on a Shopify, BigCommerce, Volusion, Xcart, Zencart, Magento, OSCom. If you're selling not on Amazon, 40 to 50% of your revenue is coming from email and SMS. If you had to guess the average number of emails an adult receives in America today, would you say it is more than 200 or less than 200? Anybody have a guess? More? Yeah. 347 emails per day. People aren't seeing your emails. You can email so much more than you think you can. I'm going to show you specifically how to do it. You also need to send out content and sales emails. Sale campaigns. And on Amazon, you should be doing this. We do this on our Amazon as well, which is you need to run more promotions than you think you should. You can see here we got giveaways, we got, which aren't going to be relevant on Amazon, but product launches, promo, promotions, influencer events, sales. Every four weeks, something needs to be discounted for a day or two, and you need to tell your community about it. If you do this, if you got 50 people or 500 people or 500,000 people in your audience, you will sell more. You will make more money. In today's environment, deadline and incentive. Deadline and incentive. Those are the only two things that are making people buy. You need a deadline. You need an incentive. And if you do that consistently, you'll make more sales. Check this out. This is an example of... Black Friday 2021, I think. So you can see we had like 600 grand. We always open our sales like a few, like a couple weeks early. So if it's a Prime Day sale, like if Prime Day is October 10th and 11th, we'll come out with a Prime Day sale on Amazon two weeks before that. We'll do the same discount that we're running on Prime Day. We'll do it two weeks early and we'll get a ton of sales because everybody's not bombarded with sales at that point. You want, whenever the sale period is expected, run your promotion two weeks before that and then run your promotion again during the actual sale period, and you'll make more money than everyone else. Here you can see these are our peak promotional days, right? By the way, quick little strategy that we use every year. Nobody does this, and every year this will make you an extra, you know, let's call it half a million bucks if you do it right. Count down to the New Year sale on Amazon and on your website. Last chance to save before 2020, what year is it? Is it 2024 already? Before 2025. Last chance to save before 2025. And you just do a countdown sale. And look at, look at the people here, right, who bought. You can see those are some peak sale days. Those people would have received 100 emails and 30 text messages before that time. They, got, they started getting emailed and SMSed and ads back on November 12th. They didn't buy until December 26th through December 31st because it was finally the end. Last chance. Incentive and deadline are what make sales. UGC and Influencer. We're going to talk about specifically how much of your marketing budget should be spent on this. But if you're an Amazon business, I can promise you, you're not spending enough on it. And it is still, I spent $17 million of my own money on paid amplification last year. My absolute best ads were user-generated content and influencer content. User-generated content is your customers, your cousins. This dude ain't paying attention. He's on Snapchat, texting and shit. Yo, my man. Yo, dude, what's cracking, man? You want to be in here? You can't be on Snapchat, dog. I got some shit to say that's going to help your business, man. Was it that boring? God damn. This guy. Yo, have you ever seen a woman this happy in your life? You've never seen a woman that happy in your entire life. This was a video from seven years ago. It is still one of my best ads. I'm going to break down the ad formula, but notice in our ads, we edit in a top headline and we edit in giant captions. We still do this. I've been doing this for seven years. It still works. The fundamentals win ball games. The basics, the simple stuff. Anything that I'm telling you, it's not fancy. I don't do fancy stuff. I'm not smart enough for that. I do simple things consistently every day. This is one of them. Get your customers to make videos for you. Pay professional creators to make videos for you. Use them on your listing. Use them as your Amazon video ads. Use them as your ads that you're using to drive people to your site. We're going to talk about how to do it. Other big picture reminders before we get into some specifics. Offer creation and optimization. This isn't going to be that much for Amazon, but this is specific for your e-commerce website. Everybody understands what their product is and what the benefit of the product is. Nobody understands who they're selling to and why they are selling to them. That is the key for offer creation and optimization. I'm going to show you an example of it later in the slides. Think about it this way. Um, my business, Boom by Cindy Joseph, or Boom Beauty now. We rebranded it. Cindy died. We got rid of her name because people didn't know her anymore. Um, women 
over 50 who are experiencing the aging process and everybody telling them that that's wrong. Everybody's anti-age, anti-wrinkle, tuck it in, tighten it up, dye your hair, your value's declining over time, your value was only during your childbearing years, your life's pretty good till about 35 and then it's shitty after that. Do you know that older women could rob banks and nobody would notice? Nobody is fucking paying attention to women over 50. I mean, it's horrifying, right? Because Women are conditioned to believe that their value comes from youth and beauty, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's gone now, and if you want to save it, by the way, you got to alter yourself in all these crazy ways, which is such horseshit. Men, on the other hand, are told, hey, you know, your value comes from production. You're a pretty suave-looking mid-40s dude. Are you in your mid-40s? Yeah, okay. You're, you're a suave-looking older gentleman. Okay, you look fucking great, man. I dig the jacket. You got the cuff? I, I, I'm going to start cuffing. I, you know, I'm looking up. Show your leg. Can you just lift your leg up for people? That right there, that is fashion, ladies and gentlemen. That man is cuffed. That man is making sure his pants do not drag on the ground. He's cuffing. You look great. Society tells you that your value comes from production. And the more money you make, the more valuable you get, which is why they got movies with George Clooney, who's 937 years old, and some woman who's like 25 as his love interest. Because as a man, if you are successful your value increases, right? So at Boom, we're talking to women about the experiences. What's up, y'all? Damn, you guys coming and just strolling in nine hours late? What's going on back there? Guys got a vest on, just taking it easy in Vegas? What happened last night, guys? What happens in Vegas stays in this room. I want to know. These boys, man. Take it seriously, gentlemen. Come on. Um, So... You know, we're talking to women about the experiences that they're having, which is people treating them differently, divorce, um, you know, under eye circles, menopause, hormonal changes. If you know who you're speaking to and the experiences that they are having, you will win. Do you know that the best product does not win in the marketplace? The best product does not win. The best promise wins. Whoever makes the best promise wins in the marketplace. And then the product has to live up to the promise that you make. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Oh, shit. I know I'm the first person, but you haven't seen this all day. Watch this. Flames. Bam. Check this out real quick. Everybody just behold for a second. Pow. Flames. You, hey, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, that's that right. You're not going to get that for the rest of the day, I can promise you. I brought flames to the party. $40 million in revenue. This is like an eight-month period. $13.6 million in spend. If you have a non-Amazon business, there is a perfect ratio of spend to revenue. So basically, if you are not spending a minimum of 20%, ignore this for Amazon, 20% of your total revenue on advertising, you're not spending enough. And if you're spending over 35%, you're spending too much. Let me break this down for you. Let's imagine you got a million dollars in revenue. Million dollar sellers. I'm still looking at this table right here for making that man crouch forth onto the ground. I'm not giving you guys any love anymore. I'm coming over here. So you got a million dollars in revenue, okay? Let's imagine that, you know, 300,000 of it on the high end, 30% goes to cost of goods. Now you're down to 700,000. Let's imagine on the very high end, 20% of it goes to general and administrative costs, team salary, insurance, that kind of stuff. Now you're down to half a million. Let's imagine that 25% goes to paid amplification. Paid ads, 250000 So you got about 250000 in profit. Then you have additional random expenses that you don't know, you know, shipping, whatever. You probably end up with about a 20% profit margin on that business. If you were to spend 40% of your revenue on ads, you spent too much, you're going to go out of business. But if you're not spending at least 20%, you are not growing the business. The thing about advertising that Amazon business owners get wrong is they start it and they stop it. Advertising is like a diet or a workout program. You must continue it. And what happens is, it's anybody here garden, grow any things? I've grown some shit, you know what I'm saying? I, I, cucumbers, okay, thank you. Uh, kale, other forms of herbs and plants and things. Um, I'm a gardener, all right? I grow things. I, live, I, I have 160 acres in the middle of nowhere where I live, way out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, I have a garden, I grow things. The interesting thing about gardening is you... Pour water onto this. You plant this seed, you know, two, three feet down in the soil. You pour water on it, and nothing happens. And you do it again, and nothing happens. You do it again, nothing happens. And you could be tempted to say, there's nothing going on here. I'm out. And this is what happens with advertisers, is below the soil, the seed sprouted, 
and it's starting to travel up, but there's no visible performance, so you stop. But there was something. There were pixeled audiences, as we're about to talk about. I'm going to give you a specific strategy for this. There were some customers. There were some email addresses. There is a reason why businesses who get to eight figures do it in year five, because the halo effect of the year-on-year consistent amplification of the business is what grows you. And most people, see, the, the key with a business is never pull from it until the snowball is big. What happens is a business starts to make money and people start balling out on Instagram, wearing ripped jeans, cuffing their legs. You know, actually, I'm a real big fan of the cuff. I'm going to try it today. I'm going to do it. I got a podcast. I'm cuffing. In your honor. What's your name, sir? James? Jim. I'm going to mention you. We're going to connect. Uh, so, They get all wild and they pull the money out before it has a chance to get big. What you want to do is reinvest every single possible dollar back into the business until it can grow big. Then you can pull from it. You get out of your business what you put into it. And uh, there was something wrong with my slides. And I had a video in here from John F. Kennedy. And it was a funny video. And I'm going to attempt. This will not be funny, but I'm going to do it anyways. Which is JFK once said, ask not what your business can do for you, but what you can do for your business. That's the question you got to ask is what more can you put into it? The other thing that you need is a truly good product, right? Quip toothbrushes, M. Jemmy shoes. I'm wearing M. Jemmy leather shoes. All birds, Tushy, purple mattress. You know there was a butt washer before Tushy? There was a weird fucking pillow before purple mattress? There was electric toothbrushes. Part- that kid is seven years old. I'm going to stop swearing. Is that your son? How old is your son? 19? Okay. You are a young-looking 19-year-old, and I'm going to just be respectful of your age. You have a wonderful haircut known as the Edgar, where I grew up. You got the Edgar. It looks good on you. A little too tall on top to be a true Edgar, but you're almost there. When you get home, Google the Edgar. Do you know about the Edgar? Is that an Edgar? Low-key Edgar. Hell yeah, bro. It looks good. (laughs) Anybody in here who is not under 19 years old, probably don't know about an Edgar, but I came up with Edgar, so that's cool. Um, anyhow, my point is, none of these people innovated in the development, in the uh, area of product. There were electric toothbrushes. There were leather shoes. What they did was they made the best promise in the marketplace, and then their product lived up to it. Your product, ha- you, you're never done with your product. It has to continually get better. You need to listen to reviews, and we're going to talk about how to do it in a second. Here, these are the, that was some big picture reminders of how you scale a business. These are the big dominoes. What I focus on, the big dominoes of scale, product. Do you realize how well product launches work, you guys? They work so freaking well. I got a whole training on this on my blog that I'll send you. But product launches work incredibly well. Here you can see, and this has now changed. Now I'm at about 60, 40. But at this point, 66% of my sales came from my hero products. 33% came from my upsells and cross-sells. Not a single person ever comes to me for these. They only buy them because they know they, they buy something else from me. And they think these people are cool. I like what they have to say. I like what they're interested uh, up to. I'm going to check out what else they have. Product launches work incredibly well. Some hacks for product launches is you can reformulate products you already have. You can put them in new components. You can add new sizes. I'm going to show you a sizing trick in a second. You can make bundles and kits. You can do slight variances. We had a, a, a non-waterproof mascara because as women age, their eyelashes get more delicate and the waterproof mascaras are hard to get off and can damage the eyelashes. So we did a non-waterproof mascara. And then the younger women, what's interesting in the market of selling to ladies is there's like reverse ageism. You know, a 65 year old woman does not want to hear a damn thing from a 45 year old woman about aging. Not at all. And here's a um, interesting thing that you can do is if you have age segments in your brand, if you're selling to like 25 to 34, and then 34 to 50, et cetera, you can have your influencers and your ambassadors match the age range of the targeting, and it works extremely well. It's a little more granular, but it works extremely well because people like to listen to people who look and sound and kind of like behave like them. So we created a waterproof version of this product for the younger women, and it went really, really well. One of the things that we do is we send out a survey to first-time buyers, second-time buyers, third-time buyers. And we ask them, hey, you know, we're a fam- well, we can't really say we're a family-owned business anymore because we sold the private equity. But hey, you know, we would really love your feedback on how we're doing and what products we th- you think we should make and anything else. And we got a bunch of questions. I'll send you the questions. These get populated into a Slack channel. My product development team reads every one of these. We get hundreds of these, thousands of them a week. 
And then it's like, yo, a bunch of people are talking about eyeliner. Maybe we should make an eyeliner. I'll give you these slides, dude. I'll give you the whole survey question, but feel free. You should be taking a picture of me. I am the star of this show. Look at that. What is that? That's a picture. Yeah, there we go. What up? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Put that on Snapchat uh, or whatever. Check this out. Boomstick Rose Nude, okay? I've got a product development technique that I call the new and fancy technique, which is take whatever you made and make a new and fancy version of it. Do you realize how effective this is? So I, I belong to a prestigious community on Twitter known as the Cold Plunge Bros, um, which actually is not uh, a community at all, and it is like what, what people make fun of. So I'm, I have a... I wrestled in high school and we did uh, sauna and then you go into the cold bath to like get your muscles feel good. So when I made some money, I was like, yo, I'm going to buy one of these cold pools and a sauna. And then they got really popular. Anybody have one of these or know about them? All of a sudden they're everywhere in the last like four or five years. And um, people on Twitter refer to men who are bros, which I kind of am pretty bro -y, but then my wife doesn't think. So this is a de we're in a debate about how bro -y I actually am. But I believe I belong to the cold plunge bros. And I was, they were down talking me on Twitter. Um, Long story short, these people who sold me this cold plunge, it's like 12 grand. And all it is, it's like a tub of water, okay? What possibly could the new one do any different? It keeps water cold. It is not a different product. However, they're like, yo, listen, this is newer and fancier. It's got wood. It's quieter. And then I bought the stupid thing because I wanted the new and fancy. It works on me too. Like new and fancy works. And so I, I released a new fancy color of my main color stick, multi, we kind of pioneered multi-purpose blush sticks, which is basically like an all-in-one cosmetic. And I sold 100,000 of those last year. So not every product is going to be a home run, but some of them will be. And the cool thing about developing new products is it gives you an opportunity for what's called a new front-end offer. We're going to talk about the assets that you need to sell a product. But here's, here's this little secret in marketing. Forget about every product other than one. Forget about every product other than one. Develop all your marketing, all your ads, all your user-generated content, all your testimonials, all your sales copy, all your landing pages, everything to sell one product. Go deep. Do not go wide. Get one product able to convert to cold traffic, and then you can work on another one. People try to market all their products, and they don't do enough for any one. You must pick one and figure out how to sell that. And this is a mistake that I see business owners continually make. These are the things that you need to sell a product. If you do this, and I've got trainings for each one of these elements on my blog. If you DM me, I can send you. If you do these, and it's not a lot of things, you will have better marketing than basically everyone else out there. Number one, a sales page, a true sales page. Number two, images where the product is being used in its intended environment, not just on white, but in context. Number two, or number three, a sales video. We're going to talk about that in a second. User-generated content a story and some sales copy, top of funnel ads, and a pre-sell article. These are the minimum viable assets that you need. And I can walk through each one. I'm going to go through a couple of the important ones right now. But it's like, if you do these well, and they're not actually that hard to do if you focus on them, you will be, you'll have better and more sophisticated marketing than basically all your competitors. Sales page. This is not just a product page with some bullets on it. I got images, I got customer testimonials, I got sales videos, I got user-generated content, I got little stories about where the product is from, why it was made, what it does. The key that you must communicate in marketing, there is one thing to remember. If you take one thing from this talk, the key that you must communicate is what is the ownership benefit of this product? How will somebody feel what will they get? What will they have? What will they obtain? What will this do for them? And then examples of people that have had that thing happen for them. Listen, at Boom, what's interesting is we don't sell makeup. We sell a philosophy. We sell the idea that if you try on the viewpoint that your life is not declining over time, that you are not worsening just by aging, if you just find yourself right and approve of yourself here and now for who you are, you will have a happier, more, you will look better. Joy is a woman's best cosmetic. Self-approval, oh shit, son. Damn, what's going down? Am I running out of time? What are we doing? Oh, you gonna hook me up? Yeah. Appreciate that, thank yeah. you. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. Eugene, right? Yeah. Give it up for Eugene, ladies and gentlemen. Eugene with the crab walk. You know, when I was in high school, that was a dance, bro. That was the, that was, we did the crab walk. You know, I feel like dancing, I have a couple dance moves. I got the jump rope, you know what I'm saying? And then I drive the bus. And I go back into jumping. You got to have two, basically, that you can rotate between. Um, those are my two. I jump rope when I drive the bus. Uh, 
Anyhow, what were we talking about? Sales pages. So, yeah, you need a sales page. Sales videos. People get these wrong. A sales video is not your product and, uh, you know, someone running around with it. A sales video is not an influencer or a customer giving a demonstration of the, vi of the product in use. A sales video, and by the way, my favorite, as I told you, I do simple marketing. Problem agitation solution is one of my favorite sales video formulas, and it is what this sales video that I wrote uh, was. Problem agitation solution. I have a bunch of sales video formulas. I got a training on that too if you DM me. But basically, a sales video doesn't have to be fancy. I got some money now, so I make mine fancy. But back in the day, it was just a slideshow of images and then a voiceover. Because the idea behind a sales video, there was a statistic, an e-marketer in 2018 that said a product page with a video in the carousel had a 64% um, more likelihood of converting than a product page without one. Because the people who watch that video are way more likely to buy, even though it's only going to be 10% of people. So problem agitation solution, let's, let's give an example of it. Um, did you know that the denim that Jim is cuffing is destroying the world's oceans? Problem, right? There's chemicals and the runoff, and it's going into the rivers and the streams. It's killing the fish and the frogs. It's making its way into the ocean. It's killing the algae. It is fucked. Agitation. Not only is that the case, but the consumption of denim in the West has gone up like 10,000% in the last 30 years. There are so many more denim factories all in these rural areas in these, um, you know, I don't know if third world is any longer, uh, what is it? Third world isn't the right word anymore. Uh, developing countries where they're all fucked up and, you know, uh, yeah. They're, I mean, listen, it's all because of our uh, consumerism, right? Because of capitalism and all that. Okay. So now I'm agitating the problem, right? Solution. We have created a non-toxic denim that doesn't destroy rivers and streams and we have a way to deal with it, so on and so forth, and you go on and you sell your product. That is one of the best ad campaigns of 2020 run by a company called Everlane, which is about a $200 million uh, apparel company. And it was straight up problem, agitation, solution. Interesting thing about these sales videos is I also do what I call closer reminder videos, which are, which are sales videos specific to overcome objections that are not the core objection, right? So it's like any buyer objections. And by the way, if you do a post-purchase survey to your consumers and you ask them, what did you consider you know, why you wouldn't buy, and you can find out what those are. You can read the reviews and find them out. But take a look at this. 20% uh, of people play that video. They watch 60% of it. It's three minutes long. 20% of people are watching a two minute and 40 second video about my product. Those are my buyers. The reason you do videos like this is because the people who watch it are the ones who buy in. And you must do the selling. We are million dollar sellers. We got to sell. We have to market. We have to tell stories. Story. Storytelling is the most powerful sales technique that exists. There's a, brand, there's a book out there called like Story Brand about this. Yeah, you, this guy knows. What's your name? Mike? Mike. Oh, I saw you nodding along, man. I'm with you. You're with me. We're together, brother. All right. Yeah, I'm watching you. Uh, all right. Mike, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. More products is better merchandising. So these are just some, some examples of merchandising from a sale. But look, this is the merchandise. The best merchandising wins. Buy one, get one. Buy one half, get one half off. Site-wide discount, live shopping discounts, free gifts with purchase, limited time bundles. The better you merchandise, and by the way, we do this strategy called sale extension where we'll run a sale and we'll be like, this is it. And then the next day we'll say, hey, guess what? We're back for a day. Do you realize how well that works? It's just human psychology because some people didn't take action and now here's another chance to get it at the deadline and incentive opportunity. So, the better your merchandising, the better you will sell. Top of funnel acquisition. So this, we're going to get into some specifics here. I kind of pioneered this idea of awareness, remarketing, and loyalty in our industry back in 2014. Be before then, there were not pixel audiences. You couldn't follow somebody around. You could only run ads to them and get their email address, and having their email address was the only way you could communicate with them before pixeled audiences came. If, uh, if, you, if your awareness pillar does not work, your business goes away. You must be generating awareness for your brand through advertising. Like I said, we use brand ambassadors where we'll say to our customers, hey, thank you so much for buying. Let us give you a product in exchange for a video review. And then those go on our blog. They go on our sales pages. They become our ads. They go on our emails. We use this content. And 10% of your total budget must go 
to influencer marketing. Why? These are micro influencers. They have small audiences, 20,000, 30,000. I qualify in our community as a micro influencer. I got like 60,000 uh, uh, Instagram followers. I got 60,000 Facebook followers. I got an email list. That audience generates for me about $25 million a year in sales. Smart Marketer does about 10 million. Zipify does about 10 million. I do about 5 million with other stuff from an audience that small because it doesn't matter the size of the audience if they are engaged. And the difference between an, in, uh, an influencer or a paid, which by the way, the best rebrand ever is influencers have now changed their names to creators, which sounds better. But the idea behind an influencer is they have influence over a group of people and they're not expensive. So if you're spending 300 grand a year on ads, 30,000 of it should be going to pay creators to make content on behalf of your brand because that professional content that those people are seeing, because they show it to their audience too, those are the same people who see the rest of your ads. That content you can use, you can mash it up together. It's unbelievably valuable content. And you can use it on Facebook. Everybody's talking about omni-channel. You got to be everywhere. You got to be on every channel. No, you don't. No, you do not. You need to be on one channel and you need to do a good job on one channel and every other channel can be remarketing or self-liquidating break-even customer acquisition as long as one channel is profitable. You guys have the benefit of, you have a profitable Amazon channel. You should be taking the profit from your Amazon channel and dumping it into growing your D2C channel. And we're going to talk about why in about five slides, which is what creates actual value in the world. Now, this methodology I have been using since the Facebook pixel allowed us to do pixeled audiences. So I want to say it's like 2014. And I still use it today. Nobody does it. The brands who do it make more money. I take prospects, warm audiences, buyers. I engage them with video content. I filter out the ones who consumed and I market to them. I call it the engage and filter method. So check this out. Two to 5% of my total advertising goes to what's called a video views audience, a video views campaign. Why? I'll tell you why in just a second. I am not asking these people to leave Facebook. I'm saying, hey, Facebook, find me people to watch this video. It's the same people that see my conversion ads later but it's so cheap because when you don't ask Facebook or Instagram to have people leave their platform, they make it almost free to market to them because they want engaging content. So check this out. You got 800,000 people for 4,500 bucks who watch 95% of that video. That's a 30 second video, which means I spent a nickel to get someone to watch 28 seconds of content about my brand. Here's another example of it. Here I spent, I have 24,000 people. I spent 10 grand. So I spent 40 cents for someone to watch four minutes and 45 seconds of testimonial content about my brand. I will trade 40 cents. Right now, I'm confident. If you watch a four minute and 40 second testimonial of someone using the brand, talking about the ownership benefit, enjoying it, I'll pay 40 cents for that because then tomorrow you're going to see an ad for that product. You're not even going to remember that you watched a five minute video and you're going to be way more likely to convert. So I filter out the people who consume the content and I sell to them. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going down out here. We're in the attention business. We need to engage audiences and then filter out the audiences that are the most engaged and offer them our products and services. This is how you fortify yourself from channels is you generate awareness. You get pixeled audiences, social media followers, email leads, and you do this. Nearly half our revenue comes from repeat businesses. Content is how we get them to come back. Our best content is user generated content and creator paid creator content. You don't have to make it yourself. By the way, I got a friend who sells knives. He'll grab the most recent Emeril Lagasse video, be like, yo, check it out. This is Emeril Lagasse showing the bear claw knife technique. He'll put it on his blog. He'll email his list about it. And then he'll say, hey, guess what? These three knives work well for this technique. He doesn't even make any of his own content. He just uses YouTube content. A few little um, formulas for these. I want to give you copy. Here's the interesting thing is optimization. You're never done optimizing. Every little thing counts. I didn't come for money. I did not grow up with money. I grew up on the lower end of the economic spectrum. I do not feel I am above any work. I'll do whatever, uh, any work I'm asking my team to do, I'm happy to do. A little optimization works super well. And for me, formulas help. So benefit call to action. This is the benefit you're going to get. Affirmation statement, something I believe that my brand also believes, or my, my customers also believe, less is more as you age. Controversial statement. If you can create controversy, you will sell. If you can be polarizing, you, can, you will sell. So we say, hey, powder magnifies wrinkles, which women do not like to hear because there's a lot of powder-based cosmetics, but we believe that, right? Content call to action, controversial statement down at the bottom. Here's another example. Value claim. Claim your value. Claim whatever. We're the world's first pro-age cosmetic line. Any value that you can claim is powerful. Nobody's going to sell. 
unless you sell, right? I, I claimed a little value earlier. I said, listen, I pioneered awareness, remarketing, and loyalty for this industry back in 2014. I did that. You wouldn't know unless I told you. Right now, it's everywhere. Everyone knows about it, but I was the first. So you got to claim that. Benefit statement, make up in just three little steps. Affirmation statement, you don't need a long makeup routine. So these are just some formulas that you can use. Here's another one. Um, well, I actually got rid of the third one, but if you DM me, I got a bunch of ad formulas. Here's another thing. When people go to e-commerce websites, there's a pop-up and it's like, yo, get 10% off. What we do is we just run ads directly to a, a hidden sales page, get 10% off. So the same people that see those video ads, the same people that see our conversion ads are also going to see an ad that's like, this store is on sale right now, 10% off. They don't have to come to our website. They're going to see the ad for it. They're going to go to a page that's not linked to from anywhere. You can only get to it from the ad. This is uh, one of our best campaigns, an evergreen discount campaign. It's just like basically a Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale that runs all year long with a 10% discount. And then those are Johnson boxes. Offer optimization. You're never done optimizing your offers. You don't need new products. You don't need to reformulate products. You can optimize the offer just by changing the merchandising. I bought this company in January of 2021. It was a $40 average order value. Within six months, I had it to a $65 average order value. I did that by changing the offers, by adding upsells, by raising prices. And, uh, you know, this, I did a, they were running all their traffic to the homepage, so I started a sample campaign. That's our best landing pages. We're up 50% in sample sales since starting that. So you can just change the way you're merchandising the products and you'll sell more. Here's a couple quick little tips. Free gift with purchase is the absolute best incentive you can possibly have in e-commerce. We were giving away free gloves. I was like, well, let's just put them in the shopping cart. We had a 10% lifted number of people completing checkouts. Sticky, uh, on an e-commerce website, any page that is not a product page, put these two buttons at the top. See our new products? Join our club. The only thing that you care about in e-commerce is get someone to look at your products or get personal information of theirs, SMS or email. So at the top of every page that isn't a product page, I got two buttons. Go look at our products or give us your information. I got the join the club strategy because some kid came home from school. He had a list of names and a bunch of dollar bills. And his dad was like, yo, dude, like, what is this? He's like, well, these are the people in the club. He's like, well, like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I told kids that it was $1 to join the club. And then they gave me a dollar and I wrote their name on the list. And he's like, well, what, what do they get when they're in the club? He's like, well, they're on the list, man. So I put join the club. Yeah, you can get on. So this, uh, the join the club headline actually increased the clicking on that button by like 30%. So um, yeah, notice our mobile header. Your mobile navigation on your site is very important. I know I've thrown a lot of resources at you, but I have a resource on that as well. Um, Cross-selling, sticky buy buttons, right? As someone's scrolling down your page, there's an add to cart button they can click. This is easy to do in any landing page builder in Shopify. Cross-selling, you are never done upselling or cross-selling. Every stage of the sales cycle, you should have a cross-sell of some variety. Open your product page with a customer testimonial. Everyone opens their product page with a title of the product. Nobody cares about the title of the product. 50% of people will never see anything other than the buy box. You must sell and start selling. Um, we do, uh, this is me selling a mullet wig, my wife in a, a troll wig, my brother in a clown wig, and uh, me in an Elvis wig. Right there, that cross-sell in the buy box for a wig cap. I bought those wig caps in 2007 for 25 cents, I sold them for four bucks. 60% of people said yes to that cross-sell. Most of the profit from my wig business came from the wig cap cross-sell on the product page. You must be cross-selling on your product pages. And then I got an app called One Click Upsell where we do you know, upsells, cross-sells, all that kind of stuff for Shopify. Um, anyone have a website pop-up offering a discount on their website? Yes, okay, look, we did too. And then we thought, how, as we t think about things, we think about how can we make things a little better? How can we optimize? I'm like, well, we've gotta be, there's got to be a way to get more people to say yes to this pop-up. So we were saying, hey, get 10% off. We changed it to get a mystery discount. Well, guess what? It's the same 10% off, but now it's a mystery. And because it's a mystery, it gets about 30%. Well, I think it's 20%. We'll see on the next page. 20% more people signing up to it. It's the same 10% we were giving. They didn't know that. They'd never been to the site. So because it's a mystery, they're 20% more likely to want to know what it is and opt in for it. So these kind of little things can have big impacts. What are we actually doing in business? You might say, oh, we're here. We're optimizing our businesses so that they're more profitable. Yes, we are. But there's a level deeper. What we're doing, I think the game is resource generation. I didn't come from resource. I wanted it. I remember very distinctly the, the power was off. The water was out. We were maybe going to have to, like, I remember a specific moment being like, man, I'm going to figure out money. 
The game is generate resource, use it towards causes that you find noble, taking care of your family, take care of your community, causes in the world that are meaningful to you. The sad part about it is that cash flow businesses are not going to generate wealth. True wealth creation. I'm trying to make 100 million liquid after taxes. I got 60 hippies to support. I got all kinds of shit I need to do with money. And cash flow businesses are not going to generate $100 million. Right? I'm, getting, I'm getting close. But um, what generates money is asset liquidation. Everything that I have told you today is about making the asset of your business more valuable so that one day you can sell it. My parents' generation, not my, my parents, my, my mom was an immigrant. My dad was, my dad's a first generation American. They grew up poor. They became hippies. They didn't do this. But the, but the baby boomer generation did this as a, as a group of people. They took the money from their 401ks. They invested it in real estate asset. They let that asset appreciate over time. They sold it. That is how, where their wealth as a generation came from. Our, our wealth comes from our businesses, right? So you must be thinking five years down the road. Everybody's looking six months, three months, tomorrow. You need to take at least one day a week and be looking down the road. When are you going to sell this asset? How are you going to make it the most valuable possible? Or are you going to take the cash flow from this asset and put it into real estate, put it into collectibles, put it into assets that are going to, to grow in value? Because that is the only way that you will actually get wealthy is by selling assets. And I figured this, I know I'm running late. KPIs, I'm almost done. KPIs. Um, if you're not monitoring your, most businesses go under because they mismanage finances. Have KPIs, I got a KPI sheet that'll show you what we monitor every week. Uh, and then read your profit and loss statement at the 10th of every month. You will make more, you will be a better business owner than about 86% of people if you just have a weekly KPI sheet and a monthly P&L that you actually read because people are not looking at their numbers. Double down on paid advertising, add products and channels, continue to make better content, invest in your team. And by the way, real quick on this, do you realize one person working eight hours a day, how valuable that person is? It's insane what one person can add. The question is, how are you to work for? Are you micromanaging people? Are you bulldogging them? Are you throwing them in front headlocks and being all crazy on them? Or are you giving them autonomy and freedom and education and support. Like when people come into my company, I say, yo, within three years, you're going to be the best social media manager in the world. Here's how we're going to get you there. I give them a goal and I give them a way to achieve that goal. You're going to go through these courses. These six blogs are going to populate into this Slack channel. You're going to read it for four hours a week. You're going to take notes in a notebook. We're going to meet once a week about your progression, what we can do and implement it in the business. You're going to go to these events. Like you have to invest in your team. Um, and then optimization of process, postmortems. Look, you're never done optimizing. At the end of every promotion, at the end of every product launch, at the end of, and this isn't limited to marketing, sit down and say what went wrong and what went right. Reflect. Reflection is how you grow. Think about what happened and look at what you want to do better next time. If you do that in every area of your business, you will be a more sophisticated and more successful business owner. Again, these are fundamentals. By the way, well, we're going to talk about that in a second. So your business communicates with a group of people who are having a collective experience. Your goal is to establish intimacy and connection with them and add value to their life by commenting on the experiences they're having and then offer solutions to the problems they face. Take a picture of that slide because this is ultimately what your business does and you don't even realize it, but this is really what it's about. If you can do this well, you will be the most successful Amazon seller. This is what it's about. Um, and then you do that on as many communication mediums as you possibly can. Make a friend or two. People conflate, these are my last three slides. People conflate working hard with success. It is not about how much you work, it is about what you produce. And if you actually end up working too much, your work goes to shit. All the studies show it. You've gotta set boundaries around your work life. A little bit more every day is what wins. I am now in my 20th year as an entrepreneur. Again, I promise you I am no smarter than anyone in this room. But I have showed up to it every day consistently with a positive attitude and taken the next step that I could possibly take in the direction of my goals and appreciated the wins and appreciated the losses because there's always something going wrong when there's something going right and just done my best every step. And look at it. I am now one of the more successful people in this room. And it's like, how did that happen? It didn't happen because I'm any smarter than any of you. That's for damn sure. It happened because I kept at it. And you can do that too. Fun is the goal. This is what you want to do in business. Have a good time. If you are not enjoying yourself, 
You have missed the point of this game that we call life. What does that mean? It means take care of yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, energetically. Have relationships. Have hobbies so that when you show up to work, you can bring enthusiasm. You can bring joy. You can make it a party. That is compelling. That is what is going to have people want to work for you. If you're all miserable and burnt out and overworked and underfucked and on fucking Red Bull and you're screwed. Nobody wants to work with you and your work is going to be terrible. Make good stuff. Make things that truly serve the world. Make your products better consistently and be profitable at any scale. $50,000 a year, $500 million a year. If you can do this, have a good time, make something meaningful and have a profit at the end of it, you won the game. Scale does not matter. I can not tell you how many people I know with giant businesses who are shackled to operations that they hate it's not about how big it gets. It is about whether or not you have enjoyed yourself, made something useful, and was profitable. Last thing, whatever it is that you want in your life, intimacy, connection, love, friendship, fun, gratitude, enjoyment, if you cannot have it here and now, you won't get it there and then. There is no amount of money that is going to change this. There is no amount of nothing is going to change for you if you acquire the shit that you think is going to change your life. Fulfillment is an inside job. You cannot have fulfillment. You cannot get fulfilled. You can be fulfilled. It is your choice. There is nothing coming for you that is going to change your life other than your own attitude, mindset, and perception of your world. So I support, I'm all about wealth creation. I'm trying to create wealth myself. I'm all about success generation. I like consumption. I'm into all of it. It is not going to make you happy. There's nothing coming for you there and then that you do not have here and now. Wherever you go, there you are. It is up to you. So you ask yourself, how can I contribute? Because it turns out that contribution of spirit is what it's about in life. You feel good when you contribute, when you show up, when you ante up, when you give, when you serve. My business motto is serve the world unselfishly and profit. Not because I think you should do that, but because I think that is how it goes. I think when you are in a role of service and you show up and you give and you contribute, that is how you profit. Um, happiness and generosity tend, sorry, gratitude and generosity tend to be good predictors of happiness and success, I have discovered in the last 20 years or so. And people say, leave the place better than you found it. I think, leave the people better than you found them. And that is how you succeed. And that's what I was trying to do here today. So um, thanks for watching. My name is Ezra Firestone. You can find me on Instagram. You can DM me. Thank you. Post pictures. So, Ezra, you're phenomenal. I appreciate you coming here. I know you did this out of the goodness of your heart to help and uh, give back, and I think everybody here really appreciates that. We did go over, but I'll allow. Yeah, give him another louder, louder, louder. Go, oh, 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 up. Let's see how long. You want to take a photo? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's do that again. One second. Okay. Ready, set, go. <laughs> yeah. Ezra. So we did go a little bit over, but I'll give time for one question. And you, you are going to hang out today a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So just one question, and then we'll go on right to the next one question. It needs to be really good. Does everybody, somebody have a really good question? Meanwhile, everybody is rushing the back table. Get All out right. of here. Nobody has a good question. No, we got one no, dude back there. One. Yeah. Keep on, come on. Shout. Hey, I feel like we know each other, man. Kayvon? Have we you met? Probably know. He's shop uh, I'm sure we bumped across each other at some of these events, maybe. Maybe. Maybe in the same beard club. I don't know. Who knows? Um, how do you... So you're talking about Amazon is 54% of your business. How do you make those decisions to... I always struggle to take away from my D2C because I don't want to give Bezos any more than he already has. This is a great question. Okay. Hey, listen, you don't want to give to you. You are giving nothing to Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is taking son. He, you, 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 you're not going to affect Jeff Bezos. Let's start there. But listen, here's the idea in commerce right now. You used to be able to protect your e-commerce business from Amazon. You used to be able to, um, you can no longer. So uh, check this statistic out. I wasn't on Amazon with boom. I went on Amazon. Do you know how much money I did in the first year? Brand traffic only, no non-brand, $6 million, which means there was $6 million in sales happening on Amazon for people searching for me who were going to a bunch of competitor knockoffs. So the idea is like the, the Amazon customer 
is not shopping on your website. We, when we went to Amazon with Boom, we had about a 17% attrition to our D2C site. So okay, 17% of people decided Amazon's free shipping, it's easier, I'm already one click there, but our D2C site is still growing. It's like the Amazon buyers are buying on Amazon and you can't stop that. So if you're not there, you're losing money. And it's like Amazon's gonna grow every year. This is, there's, unless they break them up, call them a monopoly or whatever, they're gonna keep growing. And if you're not there, you're missing out on that sales opportunity. And like I just mentioned with marketing, it's like there's so many people who just don't buy on Amazon, who don't have one-click Amazon, who are going to buy from your website, who are going to buy from every other channel that you might be on. Because we're in every channel now. We're on Walmart. We're, we're everywhere. We're in all the big aggregators of beauty. It's like you basically just want to be present everywhere you possibly can. Be on shelf if you can. Small box, big box. The idea is be everywhere. Focus on building the biggest brand presence possible because that is what sells for the most. And then you just focus on staying profitable. But if you're trying to like hide from Amazon, what's happening, if you're a good brand, is there's knockoffs who are taking your brand search. And you might as well defend that territory. It's like, you know what I don't like? Is paying for my own brand search on Google. But if I don't, someone else does. So it's like, all right, I got to pay Google. It's just like, this is the game. You can't escape it. So you have to embrace it. Thank you very much.